All right, y'all. Today is all about making your pentatonics sing. Let's do this. Hello, friends and neighbors. Welcome back to the Brownstone. My name is Rich Brown. Thank you for dropping by once again. Listen, today we're talking about pentatonics again. Um, but this time I want to talk a little bit about those things that you hear and those pentatonic licks that really give them that, uh, that sort of vocal quality, that real sort of emotive and expressive sound. Um, and there's a cool way to practice this, and it's all about adding one note to the pentatonic scale, really, to my ears anyway. Uh, and it will do a lot for your playing. Just the addition of one little, no one little note. And that note is simply going to be uh, the flat five on the minor. Now, some people refer to this as the blues scale, which is fine. Um, you can't think of it that way. I don't necessarily think of it that way because if I'm playing on the pentatonic scale, I'm going to play an A minor pentatonic. Then that sound is in my ear. If I think blues scale, then I feel like I have to use that flat five as part of the sound. But if I just think of this as a minor pentatonic scale with the option of using that flat five, then, I don't know, in a weird way it makes me think of the whole thing differently because then I can just play as I normally would play on a minor pentatonic. But then, knowing that I have that option of adding that flat five, that E flat in this case, um, it allows me to use that card whenever I want to. So then I can just play and then use the use the note that way instead of having to play you know and and making sure that I hit that note every time I play the blues scale. I don't want to think of it that way. I just want to have that extra note as an option. So that's what I do. Now, uh, a really great way to practice this, because now we have this shape. So a really great way to practice this and get into the idea of hearing this particular note, the flat five on the minor pentatonic, uh, is to play my favorite sequential pattern on a minor pentatonic scale, and that is the four note ascending and descending um, sequence, right? Um, the four note pattern on almost any scale just sounds great because it's four notes, there's a certain symmetry to it, and an evenness to the sound and the rhythm, no matter where I started in the bar, right? So, if I play a four note ascending uh, pattern on a minor pentatonic, and then back, All I'm doing there is I'm starting four notes from each degree of the scale. And one really great thing to do when you're practicing these sequences, any sequence, doesn't matter if it's four notes or, you know, ascending chords on a major or what have you, keep track of the note that you are starting your sequence on, right? So if I'm playing a four note sequence, I'm keeping track by going first note, second note, third note, fourth note, fifth note. That way I don't miss anything because a lot of times what happens is if I'm showing a new sequence to a student, they'll understand the exercise, but then when they play through there's a tendency to skip a note here and there, especially on the descending patterns. So keep track of the note 
Always keep track of that note where you're starting your sequence. Always, always. Right? Now, so that was my four note sequence on a minor pentatonic. So now what I want to do is I want to play that four note sequence the same way, but this time I want to add that flat five, the E flat, at the sixth fret of the A string. This way I get a very interesting, a very interesting sound because what happens is this E flat is not just a passing tone in the blues scale. Now that note is a viable option, right? It's something that we can definitely hear in the context of this minor pentatonic. That's how I want you to think of this. Not necessarily the blues scale, even though it is the blues scale. But I want you to be able to hear that minor pentatonic scale and also hear that E flat in the case of this A minor, right? Uh, in this harmony because then it will allow for you to use that particular interval to your advantage in a way that's much more musical and much less forced, right? So here's what I do. Same four note sequence, but this time I add that E flat at the sixth fret of the A string. And I get this four note ascending pattern. the cool sort of resolution you get from those last notes, that's those last four notes. That's just a great phrase on its own. Another thing you can do is play the same four four note sequence, but to make things a little more interesting, um, play a different form of the pentatonic scale where you have all of the notes of your pentatonic, but you leave out the natural fifth. So when you play through the scale, what you have is root, minor third, fourth, flat five, no natural five, go straight to the seventh, and the octave. So you get this sound. Very cool thing. And then when you play your four note sequence on that pattern, it's got some, some funk on it. It's got some grit to it that I really dig. So this is a great exercise. Play the minor pentatonic with the flat five and no natural five. Yeah, that's great. So then the other thing is, um, to adapt this particular harmony or sound, let's call it a sound, to the major pentatonic. Now, if you've seen previous videos of mine discussing the pentatonic scale, uh, maybe you already know that when you play a major pentatonic starting from the second note of your minor pentatonic, you get the relative major. I'll show you what I mean by that. So here is my uh, minor pentatonic. So let's say I play that minor pentatonic. just up to that C at the fifth fret of the G string. Now, watch what happens here. If I leave that first note out and just play C, well, that, that's a major pentatonic scale. So see what's happening there? I've, I've started my A minor pentatonic scale from the second note, and that gives me the relative major. In other words, now, Starting on that C, playing the notes of that A minor pentatonic gives me a major pentatonic. You can hear how 
that's all the same scale. So essentially A minor pentatonic and C major pentatonic are the same scale, right? So all the licks and phrases that you can play on an A minor, you can also play on a C major. But this is very cool because now when you are using the major pentatonic, you don't necessarily want to use this formation where you have the first two notes on the same string and then the next note is on the, the string below that. Um, what you want to do is you want to play the first three notes on the same string because when I add that, that E flat, which in this case is the minor third, when I add that E flat, that minor third, um, on the same string, I get that sequence where the first four notes of my major pentatonic are on the same string. See what I'm saying? This is cool because when I play this particular formation of the major pentatonic putting the first three notes of the same string on the same string, um, I can easily add that minor third. So now when I start to play the same sequences, let's say the four note ascending pattern on a C major pentatonic scale using the formation of the first three notes of the same string, on the same string, then such a great sound, right? And it's very cool because now I'm hearing that, that minor third, in the case of the major, in context of the scale. It doesn't sound so out, right? It sounds like it, it really should be there. So, with that major scale formation, with the first three notes on the same string, now what I can start to do is... Uh, also think of that minor third as a passing tone, right? Before I was avoiding that a little bit uh, with the minor pentatonic and really trying to hear that note in context. I can still do that with the major, but it's also great to use that minor third as a passing tone because now whenever I play the major pentatonic, Again, I don't want to think of it as the blue scale. I want to be able to think of this as a, a major pentatonic or a minor pentatonic with a certain note added. In the case of the minor, it's going to be the flat five. In the case of the major, it's going to be the minor third. It's the same note, really. E flat, right? But what happens when I think about the E flat as a passing tone on the major, this is when I can start to get a little bit more lyricism and that sort of vocal vibe into my playing, that real sort of singing sound. Because if I practice a major pentatonic and then use that flat, that flat third or that minor third as a passing tone, what I can do is slide into the major third. And then I can also slide back into that second, downward into that second. So there I'm using that minor third as a passing tone. So you can see what I'm doing there. I'm playing like then using that minor third to slide in to the major third. Going all the way up to the major third again, slide in from that minor third, and then slide down to that second from the minor third. And then again. So it's very cool. Gives you that real sort of vocal quality to the uh, to the major pentatonic. Pretty cool, right? So the other thing is I can do the same thing and resolve down to the A 
and that puts me on the A minor. So I can use, again, as I was saying before, you can use these um, licks interchangeably. Whether you play them on the A minor or the C minor, it's the same scale. It's all going to work. And that's that, my friends. All right, y'all, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, do me a favor. If you like this video, please do click like, share it amongst your bass playing friends or any musicians who might be interested in this. Uh, you can also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You can donate to the channel in one of two ways. I will leave the, uh, the donation link in the description box. And you can also join the channel for a mere $5 a month. Cancel at any time when you feel that you have given enough. All of the above is greatly appreciated. And of course, you can comment at any time on any of the videos on this channel. I read all of them. I might not be able to respond to everyone because there's a lot of comments. But uh, I do appreciate every word, and I, I appreciate the time that you are taking to send me the, uh, the positive message. And that's that, my friends and neighbors. My name is Rich Brown. Thank you once again for visiting the Brownstone, and I will see you in the next video.